let's talk about taxes, though. Okay. Because that's how the money is going to get raised, Correct. one way or the other. Correct. Um, I think we have a screen, if we could, that I, yeah. puts up a little bit of a menu here. Yes. Of, I don't know if it's options. Actually, they may not be options at all. No, no, there are, pl all. there are plenty of options. There are plenty of but options. But there's, there's not many ways to get where you need to go unless you start to do some of these things. Correct. Maybe. So the question is, of, the, of what's on the screen, you can, you can let the tax cuts ex expire? That well, gets you look, can I just billion? say this? Yep. You have to let the tax cuts expire. You have to. You, you have to let those expire. That's $390 billion. We're going to have, again, we're, we're going we're gonna to be broke really quickly unless we get serious about dealing with our spending issues and, and unless we, and the only, we can either, I, I don't know if we'll be able to cut spending that much. 60% of our spending are transfer right. payments. But if you, if, you're, if you think we're going broke for, and, and you think Trump is going to be the president, he's not going to let those tax cuts expire if he can avoid it. it the, the thing he, that, does, he does not want the corporate tax rate to go uh, to 25%, yeah. as you're suggesting it'll have to. He's suggesting it should go to 15%. I, I'm saying that to just to get us to the point where we stabilize debt to GDP at where it is right now, here's what you need to do. You need to let the Trump tax cuts expire. That's $390 billion. You need to raise the payroll tax on every single working person, 1%. That's another big slug. You need to... What do you think that does to jobs? I, I, we're clearly going to have a period of contraction, which hopefully, that's why I was going to say, it's going to be really important for the Fed to be able to offset the fiscal right. contraction area that's going to come. Then you want to increase the individual tax rate in all the way no. to the top rate of no. close to 50%. No. no, hold it. Yep. I don't want to do any of this stuff. What I'm telling you is, is that we've got to be serious about where we are fiscally and so I'm giving you, there's a whole right. set of options, right? We could go in and cut 25% of, of the federal workforce. Some people may do that. I, I, there's, there's a whole, there's a website where you can go look and play with all the options. You can raise the capital gains rate from 21 to 28%. That only gets you $10 billion right. a year. It actually doesn't get you what you need. So I'm simply showing right. some of the things that you can do. Yes, you'd have to raise right. the tax rate. On the top, I think probably everyone over 200 grand probably have to raise that to 49.5%. If you do all these things, all these things, ra raise the Social Security from 65 to 70. If you do all these things, means test, right. Medicare, if you do all these things, all you do is you get to a primary balance. What that means is you stabilize debt to GDP. You're still actually increasing your debt. Right. You're still actually increasing it because it excludes the interest costs, which, oh, by the way, the interest bill this year is larger than every single line item except Social Security. It's larger than defense spending, larger than Medicare. I want to talk about uh, why you're here, which is Robin Hood and this conference. But before I do that, is this given all of the things you're saying, are you off buying gold and Bitcoin and, and I think all, somewhere? I think all roads lead to inflation. We're going to end up if you so. Just, but does all roads lead to inflation, therefore gold is a good investment? Is Bitcoin a good investment I, to you? I, I, I'm long gold. I'm long Bitcoin. I think commodities are so ridiculously under-owned. So I'm long commodities. I think most young people find their inflation hedges via the NASDAQ. That's also been great. It's probably some combination. I probably have some basket of gold, Bitcoin, commodities, and NASDAQ, something like that. And I would own zero fixed income. If I had my cash, it would right. be... Very short term. The playbook to get out of this, you see it in Japan right now. They have 2% inflation, 30, 30 basis points overnight. They don't want to raise rates. The playbook to get out of this is that you inflate your way out and, and you have a small tax on the consumer and you run interest rates and nominal growth rate, interest rates um, below inflation and nominal growth uh, above inflation. And that's how you reduce your debt to GDP. So you're going to have... The Fed, be, they should be easy. They, they should be easy. They should be easy. You want, they them, should, they should you want be, them to cut. So just, just real quickly, yeah. every 100 basis points, given where our debt right. to GDP right now, every 100 basis points is worth about $90 billion a year to the deficit. $90 billion. So, yes, if we're trying to stabilize debt to GDP, we want to run the most dovish monetary policy that we can without letting inflation right. become too much of a tax on the citizenry. So, yes, 
All roads lead to inflation. That's historically the way every civilization has gotten out is they've inflated away their debts.